Uh, hello everyone, hello class, uh, particularly to the BATS uh, um, agricultural students to be graduated this coming, uh, this 2020. No? All right, uh, we have discussed previously on uh, soil formation, weathering, and rocks. And be sure to uh, master the concept of those uh, topics because our succeeding topics will uh, build upon on those uh, previous concepts. And today uh, we'll be discussing on uh, soil survey and classification. Okay, this is one of the sub areas of soil science. Okay, uh, make sure that uh, you also uh, understand this topic and master this topic because uh, there were uh, many uh, questions that has been uh, uh, derived from previous board exams on this uh, topic, the soil formation, uh, no, soil survey and classification. So to start with, uh, so let me share you my screen. Where is it? Oh, yeah, this one. All right. Okay, uh, soil classification or, or soil taxonomy, you know. So when we say uh, soil classification, so we have two groups the soils according to their properties, no? and uh, there are different properties of the soils. We have physical properties, chemical properties, and uh, all those uh, levels of classifications that we would able to group soils. No? Uh, in our everyday life, we have been uh, classif classifying classifying things, no? like for example, in our friends, we are going to classify. Uh, Host among from them are we considered as uh, mga bright or mga bright nga grupo. So we classify them according to intelligence. Uh, sometimes we classify them based on colors. Uy, yung mga amigo nga mga murina, mga uh, itumon, mga puti. Ano? And sometimes we classify our friends based on height. So may mga mugbo, na yung mga tagas, na yung mga average lang. So every day we have been classifying things. And so as in soil science, uh, we have to classify and even in animal science and in uh, crop science, we have been uh, classifying things. We have been classifying plants, classifying animals. So classification is an everyday thing, okay? So when we say soil taxonomy, so this uh, taxonomy, taxonomy is a science of naming. So there are different names of soils based under uh, different classifications. So they're naming, so soil taxonomy. Okay, so let me uh, uh, project this, this one. Okay, soil classification. So we have uh, soil taxonomy. Let me have the highlighter first. All right, so taxonomy. So uh, what is soil taxonomy? No? Soil taxonomy, this formal term refers to system of classification. So there must be a system of classification in soil science. So if we have to classify things, there must be a procedure, there must be a system of classification. Otherwise, if we have no system and there is no way of classifying them. So we must have a system of classification. And anything that we, that, that we do, even in our uh, uh, daily lives, our daily activities, our different uh, home activities, be it small or big. So the systems is very important. All right, uh, for example, in, uh, uh, I'm working here in uh, the USST. Even in our small task, there must be a system. The purpose of the system is to have an order, an orderly arrangement of works or anything that we do, there must be a system, okay? So taxonomy, is a system of classification. Uh, this is developed by USDA or uh, United States Department of Agriculture. So our system of classifications in this classification uh, topic will be based on the USDA because there must be a different system of classification. There is an international system, there are different system in Canada, but for this particular uh, topic, will be using the USDA. And in general, Philippines has been following the system of classification based on USDA. Now, if you are to study uh, 
in more detail of uh, soil taxonomy uh, to be applied in the Philippines, please refer to the system of classifications developed by the USDA. As there are many systems of classification, please focus on the USDA. All right, so that's it. So uh, what is an individual soils? Okay, how, how do you define uh, individual soils? What is it? Okay, so there is uh, different concepts and different terms when we are to study soils. So first, we look at the pidon. No, we have the pidon. Okay, so a pidon is a hexa, hexagonal column of soils measuring from 1 to 10 square meter in top surface area. So ibig sabihin na uh, uh, hexagonal pidon, it is a uh, unit of classification by which we are to look at the pidon when we classify uh, soils. We have to look at the, the characteristics of the speedon, be it a physical, be it a chemical, be it a biological classification. So we have to inspect, we have to look at the pidon. Because pidon, a pidon is a basic sampling unit used in soil survey. Now, if you are to conduct the soil survey, so it is impossible to conduct a soil survey without looking at the characteristic of a pidon. So PIDON now is the basic unit of soil survey. So okay, we cannot conduct a soil survey without diagnosing, without analyzing the PIDON. Okay, it is a column of soils. It's like a, a model uh, that you are going to look into the different uh, properties of the soils. Okay, so you have to deal that clearly on the succeeding uh, topic. So we have a polypidon, of course, uh, from the word poly, is a group of pidon, okay? Uh, an essential soil individual comprising an identifiable series of soils in an area. It is comprising an identifiable series of soils in an area. So in a pidon, it is an individual uh, presentation of a soil in an area. Then a polypidon, it is a... Uh, series of soils in an area. Uh, medyo mas uh, malawak siya, mas tako kumpara sa pidon. It is made up of a multiple pidons and has distinctive characteristics that differentiate it from surrounding polypidons. All right. So another uh, concept in here, we have uh, series. Okay. Series is a class of soils and a basic unit to classify soils. Okay. It is a class of soils and a basic units used to classify soils. Nearly there are 400 soil series in the Philippines. So there are many soil series in the Philippines. So uh, soil series now is a specific name of a particular soils. Okay, as there are nearly 400 soil series in the Philippines. So take note, soil series, the basic unit used to classify soils. Okay, if the basic unit of soil survey is a pidon, then the basic unit of uh, classification of the soil is series. Uh, for example, in animal science and in soil science, uh, the basic unit of classification is, is uh, species. We have the genus and species. In, in a scientific name of uh, animals and plants, there's a genus and a species. And a species is the basic unit of classifications in plants and animals. In soils, the basic unit of uh, classification is series. So take note of that. All right, so uh, we have some uh, illustration here. So uh, this is uh, this one. Uh, this represents a uh, pidon. If you are to look at the pidon, so you can see that the pidon is a, a hexa, hexagonal uh, representation of a soil. So there's a side in here, side, side, there are. So the eight sides of uh, dimensions of the soil has been represented. Whenever we are to uh, study or we have to conduct a soil survey. Now, if we are to conduct a soil survey, we have to observe the different properties of the soils represented by this pidon. Oh, this is the pidon. So look at the pidon. So uh, uh, pidon is usually is uh, 
dug or uh, dug from zero to 150 centimeters so that uh, it could uh, it would represent the different layers or horizons of the soil so uh, polypidon represents uh, a group of pidon so uh, polypidon is uh, use interchangeably or sometimes we call it equitably as the landscape no because it is composed of different polypidons now uh, going back into a swell pidon so there are some uh, layers in here what we call a swell profile so we have different, different swell profile the a profile or a horizon okay we have the b horizon and the c horizon okay the a horizon or the a uh, soil profile is uh, constitute the surface soil. So look at that. So it ranges from uh, zero to um, at least more than 30 uh, centimeters depth. It is comprises the soil uh, A horizon. And we have the B horizon, okay. So look at this, this is the B horizon and there is a uh, relatively diffuse boundaries between uh, A and B, the B and C horizon. Then we have the C horizon. The B horizon is actually is uh, the B and the C horizon actually is the uh, subsoil, okay? And the A is the surface soil. Then the, actually the C horizon, the C horizon, it is the layer of the soil profile that's made up of uh, unconsolidated uh, rocks fragments, meaning to say, so the C horizon is derived actually is uh, derived from the bid rock, which is the R, but uh, has been undergoing a series of uh, withering. That's why there is some loose arrangement or uh, unconsolidated arrangement of uh, soils made up of different fragments of rocks that has been uh, undergoing the series of withering. Then of course, R is the bid rock or the hardest, the hard portion of the uh, of the soil profile. So uh, if we're going to dug um, soil pedun, uh, more than uh, 150 centimeters, uh, maybe we could uh, observe a uh, hard portion, composed mainly of rocks as the bid rock. But uh, there are some soils that the horizons go differ or go beyond 150 centimeters, particularly those areas or soils that has been through a long period of withering. So the longest the periods the soil has, that, has, that has been uh, undergoing, the undergoing withering, so we expect so uh, the, the, the deeper soil profile. So when we say A, B, and C, and R, we're talking about the soil profile. So the soil profile now is uh, the, the portions of the soils representing different soil horizon. A is the horizon, B is horizon, C is also the horizon, okay? So take note in here, uh, there is the word a control section from A to B. So there's a control section. What does it mean? No? The control section is actually the A and the B horizon. The control section, when we are to uh, study soil survey and we have to classify soils. So you are to look into the different characteristics of these uh, control sections, the A and the B horizon. Usually the control sections is ranging from zero to uh, at least no more than or 90, 90 centimeter or the 0.9 uh, meter. So this is the control sections. In this area, we are to look into the, the characteristics of the soils in terms of temperature, the characteristic of the soils in terms of uh, water, in terms of physical, in terms of chemical uh, properties, so that by uh, studying the control section, uh, we can classify and we can name soils. So another terms of E and B horizon is the soil solemn. So take note for that, okay? So I guess, uh, uh, I hope it is now uh, clearer to you as to what is the concept of pidon and uh, polypidon. As we have just uh, discussed earlier, that the pidon is the basic unit of uh, soil, soil uh, survey. And a series is the basic unit of soil classification. And when we classify, when we name soils, we are to look into the properties of the soils, even at physical, chemical, biological properties, 
we have to look at the properties at the control sections of the soils or the soil solum. So, uh, ganon. So, take note for that, ha? Huh? Okay, let us proceed now. Okay, uh, what are the principles of uh, taxonomy or uh, naming of soils? Just, uh, I just mentioned earlier that uh, uh, we have uh, different systems of classification and there are some uh, methods of classifying things no? based on different properties and characteristics. So the principles of soil taxonomy are, first, we have to classify uh, soils on the basis of properties because if there is no basis of classification, so naming things would be very difficult. You have to classify based on properties. And what are those different properties, no? Okay, we are to look into that. Okay, so soil properties should be readily observable and or measurable. Okay, those properties that we'll be using to classify things or classify soils should be readily observable and measurable. So, dapat makita na to ang atong, ang atong mga properties kung ma-measure para ato silang ma-classify. Because if we cannot observe them, and if we cannot measure them, so there's no way of classifying them. So we have to measure and classify. For example, sa atong adla-adla nga kinabuhi, sama sa ato, sa ato ang pag-classify sa mga tao, panalitan kung mo-classify ka o height, so height is measurable. May yung kakinsam ng mga tag-as. Ang mga tag-as, katong height nila, 5'8 pataas, tag-as sila. So measurable ang height. So katong 5'8 padalong sa... 5-2 o 5-3, may ngunta nga mga medium height. May ngunta 5-2 pababa, may ngunta o mga mugbo sila. So, it should be observable, makita, and measurable so that we can classify things. Okay? There are... Uh, okay, another is, soil properties should either affect soil genesis or result from soil genesis. Again, soil properties should either affect soil genesis. When we say soil genesis, affect how the soil is being formed. Okay, those properties should affect how the soil is being developed or the properties should be a result from the development of the soils. Uh, for example, uh, physical properties uh, such as, uh, uh, shall we say, the degree of uh, hardness of the rocks. So we have different types of rocks Okay, and the properties we are going to look at here is the the degree of hardness no, or softness of the particular rocks. So when rocks is uh, very difficult or hard, very hard, it is very difficult to decompose. And that hardness property would eventually affect soil formation. So the hardest is the minerals or the rocks, the difficult it is to be withered, to be decomposed. And the soft is the mineral or the rocks, then the, the, uh, the easier it would be uh, decomposed out from that rocks. So that hardness and softness property of the, of the rocks affect the soil formation. Or it's either that properties is a product of, uh, of uh, formation. For example, uh, this particular rocks has been subjected to uh, different climates different climates, no? Therefore, different climates acted on a rock uh, must have a resulting soils after uh, withering different from soils developed in the arid region and in tropical region and in humid region. So, I'm meaning to say that property should either be a product of genesis or that affect soil genesis. Take note for that. Okay, so uh, why do we need to classify things? So why do we need to classify uh, soils? For what purpose? Okay, so of course we classify things to organize knowledge about soils. If there is no way of classifying things, then everything should be in random. So uh, difficult to understand because uh, no classification, no naming. No, we cannot. We cannot uh, communicate easily about soils when uh, knowledge is disorganized. Okay, the purpose is to organize knowledge about soils. 
And the uh, other thing is, understand relationship among the principles. Now, uh, if we can, uh, if we can uh, classify things, if we can classify soils, we can understand different properties of that soils. Uh, like for example, no, uh, uh, sa diseases. No, uh, if, if we classify disease like fungus and bacteria, for example, so we can understand the relationship among different organisms, how they act in the environment and what is their effect. And so as with the soils, no? when we understand uh, relationship among different soils, so we can, uh, we can uh, do uh, recommendations to a particular soils. For example, the soil is clay and the other soils is sandy and the other is silty. So we can understand uh, what is the relationship between the uh, uh, amount of uh, fertilizers to be applied on the sandy soils, to, uh, to be applied on the silty soils, to be applied on the clay soils. So understand relationship among different soils. There are soils of common uh, characteristics and there are soils of different characteristics. So understand relationship among soils. The other is, uh, Another purpose of naming soils is establish groups or classes for practical purposes. Now, because we name soils and that names has been uh, tagged into uh, different uses and purposes. So now for as long as we understand and we know the soils that we are dealing with, then of course we can, uh, we can maneuver, uh, we can adjust our management system to that particular soils, which is based suited for that specific soils. To understand relationship among different soils, establish groups of classes for practical purposes. For example, there are soils good for agriculture and there are soils good for construction. So there are soils not good for construction. If we do not understand that, that particular soils would easily go into a landslide, then uh, that would result into a damage of our properties just because of our lack of understanding about uh, different classes and the properties of the soils. Yes, uh, because we know the particular names and properties of the soils, we can predict their behavior. What happens when it rains and what happens to the soils when it has a drought for a longer period? Some soils during rainy season would landslide and some soils when, during a dry period would crack and forms a lot, a lot of cracks and uh, after a long period it cracks, then eventually there's a rain, then the soils eventually bar down. So uh, we can predict the behavior. We can predict that particular soils is uh, productive soils and fertile soils, okay? So uh, other purpose is for identifying the best uses, no, uh, suitable. In fact, we have the Soil map. We have the soil fertility map. We have a map map of soils that is good for construction. Okay, so identifying best uses. This soil is good for uh, agriculture. Uh, while other this one is good for um, commercial and for uh, construction. Okay, we can we can uh, identify the soils are acidic and good for pineapple, and the other one is good for banana. So there are some. Uh, Best uses for particular soils, soils for as long as we know the uh, behavior of that soils. Yes, of course, uh, uh, because of naming soils, because of soil taxonomy, we can estimate productivity. As there are soils productive and there are soils non productive in terms of agriculture for, or whatever purposes we may use them. And because of soil taxonomy, we can extend research. Uh, research result. Now, uh, if we are a soil scientist and we are conducting, a, a, shall we say, a soil study, soil experiment, we are conducting a crop production in particular soils. So we can extend easily uh, and uh, we can communicate our results to other scientists, to other readers, for as long as our readers also following the same taxonomic classification for that particular soils. For example, uh, I have a uh, research on soils and I'm talking about soils in my study and I have to publish that study in a journal. Whenever a particular uh, readers or researchers from other countries of the world try to read my research, 
at least we have a common understanding while reading the same experiment because we are on the same footing in terms of understanding the soil taxonomy. So we can communicate results, we can understand uh, researches published in journals because we have common understanding about taxonomy. So what are different requirements and when we are to uh, when we are to uh, conduct a soil survey? So uh, just a while ago, I made mention about the pidon, and in fact, uh, I have emphasized in there uh, the uh, the control section, the control sections of the pidon. So, what are the requirements in classifying uh, soils and naming soils? Yeah, yeah. One of the physical properties that we are trying to uh, look, try to study, when we are to uh, study uh, soil survey. So you are to look into the temperature regimes, the temperature regimes of that particular control sections in the pidon. Right, okay, so temperature regimes, what does that mean? No? So the mean annual soil temperature measured at 50 centimeter from the surface. So within the control section of the pidon, we are to look into the temperature region at that portion from zero to 50 centimeter of the control section. So, claro, again, the main annual soil temperature or the average uh, temperatures of that 50 centimeter control section in a year. So, that's the, that is what we mean when we, th when we say temperature regions, okay? So, try to understand that. All right, we also look into a uh, moisture regime of the pidon. So what does it mean, no? Moisture regimes, number of days when the soil contains available water during the period when soil temperature at the 50 centimeter below the surface is above five degree Celsius. Okay, meaning to say, uh, what is the moisture regime of that particular control section when the surface or the, when the surface is above five degree Celsius. So, I'm going to hear up because it's mataas yung uh, sentence natin, pero emphasize ko lang ulit. We're talking about number of days. So, a moisture regime refers to the number of days. I would like to emphasize days okay number of days when the soil contains available water during the period when the soil temperature at 50 centimeter below the surface is above five degree celsius okay so we have a control section uh, now which is uh, below five centimeter and what is the moisture regime of that below 50 centimeter, sorry, 50 centimeter below the surface when it has a five degree Celsius temperature? Okay, so again, number of days when soil contains available water, number of days when soils contain available water during the period when soil temperatures at 50 cm below the surface is above five degree Celsius. Again, it all. So the temperature requirements of the below 50 centimeter is above five degree Celsius. Then pila ka adlaw nga na ay tubig kaninga control section. Okay, try to uh, read on that and try to understand because uh, you are, we are looking at different terms in here. So we're looking at the number of days. We are looking at the available water. And we are also looking at the soil temperature below 50 centimeter when the temperature of that region is above 5 degree Celsius. So try to understand in this because uh, medyo mahirap siya uh, intindihin, but 
try to uh, try to focus and try to understand. Okay? So, parang ganito lang. So, pila ka adlaw nga na ay tubig kani nga control section kung ang iyahang temperature is above 5 degrees Celsius, ang temperature anang section nga below 5 centimeter ano, below 50 centimeter on the control section. So, pila ka adlaw nga na asya ay tubig or walay tubig kung ang temperature aning 50 cm below the surface is above 5 degree Celsius. So, medyo komplikado because gisturihan ang days, available water, temperature, aning 50 cm below na control section. So, let me proceed now. But the thing is, we have to look at the moisture regimes of that particular sections that we have been uh, talking in this uh, uh, points and just in this paragraph so another requirements we are to look into the diagnostic horizons now after we look into the temperature after we look into the moisture regime we have to look the diagnostic horizons so there are some horizons we have a horizon the b horizon and the c horizon but uh, what particularly is the diagnostic horizon as we have uh, different A, B, and C, and every, and even we have the R horizon. But what is the diagnostic horizon? Diagnostic horizons, distinct types of horizons that reflect nature of soil formation. Again, distinct types of horizon, or this a layer, uh, distinct types of horizons that reflect nature of soil formation. So anong mayroon doon? So anong mayroon doon sa horizon that would tell us that this soil has been through this kind of soil formation. For example, uh, pag usually no, usually in our experience sa ako no, because uh, of course I have been into a practice in agriculture. So uh, usually kung magdo kong area, nya kung magkalot ko sa area, kung makita na ko ang area is medyo na pagka gray gray uh, gray in color so i would uh, i would conclude i would infer that maybe this particular soil has been uh, subjected to a long period of uh, submergence so maybe na ani mayroong tubig ito sa matagal na panahon pero ngayon wala nang tubig but when i uh, dug from that area when i observe the gray color of the soils so it gives me an idea that this particular soils has been into a period of long submergence. There must be a water in this area a long time or long period ago. So ganun, no? So dun sa horizon, it would uh, tell us that ano ba ang mga nakaraan itong mga lupa na ito. So merong history. So makita natin. So again, diagnostic horizons, distinct types of horizons that reflect nature of soil formation. Uh, I mean, san din, no? Uh, dito sa San Isidro campus mayroong mga gipang gipang graded diyan labi na diyan sa ubos atong gym no may 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 graded diyan kung tingnan mo yung mga script area or mga cutted area makita mo yung mga different layers of horizon that would tell you that ah this is the original horizon ah this particular horizon is uh, anthropic horizon maybe this horizon has been uh, tambak lang no tambak lang siya hindi siya original na bato na decompose so makita natin kung alin dong layer na yon ang tambak, alin alin dong ang layer na originally uh, from product of witherings from rocks. So parang magano no. So ang horizon don sa diagnostic horizon will tell us the history and properties of that soils. Okay. So we have uh, two types of diagnostic horizons. We have the EP pidon. EP ibig sabihin ng EP is surface from the word epidermis. So the the epidermis in our skin is the upper portion, epipidon. When it's epipidon, the upper portion of the pidon. So that is the other term of epipidon is surface diagnostic horizon. So upper man siya, so surface. So epipidon usually uh, talks about the A horizon in the soil profile, the one uh, we have made mention while ago don sa pidon. 
So, I mean to say, if it be done, surface diagnostic horizon. Meaning to say, ano yung makikita natin doon sa A-horizon? Yung lahat natin na makikita sa A-horizon would tell us something, the history of that swells. No? Anong mayroon doon? Uh, paano ano bang na-deposit doon, na-accumulates doon, would tell us the history of that A-horizon swells. Okay, klaro? Okay, ipipi doon, surface diagnostic horizon. Ano yung makikita natin doon sa surface or the A horizon is considered as a characteristics of EPP done. Okay. Another is we have the subsurface diagnostic horizon. From the word subsurface, it is beyond or below the horizon. This is the B horizon. No? And even uh, extended up to a portion of the C horizon. So subsurface diagnostic horizon. Ano yung makikita natin doon sa B and C horizon? So, ano yung makikita din sa C and the B horizon will tell us something about the nature and history of this particular swells when we are to analyze the pidon. Okay? So another uh, requirements when we are to uh, when we are to uh, uh, conduct a swell survey is of course the mineralogy. So ano yung mga mineral na mayroon doon sa ating uh, control section? No, the, uh, ano yung mga minerals meron doon? So, what types of uh, or dominant type of clay minerals? Ano ba ang mga daghan na minerals? Uh, when you're talking about mineralogy, kasama dito ang mga bato. No, rocks and minerals, of course. Kasama dito ang mga clay. Uh, kasama doon ang mga, dito ang mga um, siski or pure siski oxides. Okay? So, dito sa mineralogy, Hindi kasama, hindi kasama dito ang mga organic materials or organic region ng mga sewills. Because there are sewills derived from uh, decompositions of uh, mga plants and animal debris. These are not considered mineral sewills. They are considered as organic sewills. They are not the major source of the sewills. Because the major source, the principal source of sewills is the rocks and minerals. Okay? So we have to look into the mineral uh, characteristics within the control sections of the pidon. You have to look into that. Kung ano yung dominant type of clay, so yun ang pang pangalan natin sa 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 yuta o sa swells na yun, sa lupa na yun. Okay? Then we are also to look into uh, when we conduct a soil survey, we look into the particle size distribution. So, so you say particle size, we are talking about the sizes of the granules. The finer, the, there are finer particles, there are uh, medium uh, size particles of the swells, and there are sharp coarse, coarser or bigger particles as well. So, particle size distribution, proportions of coarse fragments, medium malalaking uh, mga fragments, proportion of coarse fragments from 2 mm to 74 mm in size, mm is millimeter size particles. In combinations with fine fragments, it is uh, less than 2 mm size particles, which are we consider as clay. Okay? So, particle size distribution, meron tayong gravel, meron tayong mga boulders, meron tayong mga clay, mga silt, sand. No? Kasama dyan sa, sa particle size distribution yan. May mga dagko, doon ay gagmay, na medyo dagko, medyo gagmay. So, ganun. All right. So, those are the requirements. No? I look at the requirements when we are to conduct a soil survey. So, temperature regime, moisture regime, diagnostic horizon, mineralogy, particle size. Okay. So, I guess we have to, uh, to stop at this portion because uh, para ma-relax naman tayo. Okay. So we have to continue, no? Uh, after this break.